What's going on YouTube? Mocha back here with another video. Now if you guys are new, welcome to the cafe. Grab your coffee, grab your donut, kick your feet up, and consider subscribing today and joining the community. Now let's get into this. Now with E3 out the door, and us going into pretty much the stretch of summer where it's usually a drought, I thought this would be the perfect time to drop this video and kind of prepare you guys for everything you need to know about Insurgency before going into the beta, the release, and then for you guys on console coming into 2019. First things first, let's get to know your dev team. NWI, also known as New World Interactive, they are the people publishing and developing Insurgency Sandstorm. Now, they have a pretty good track record as well, known for, obviously, Insurgency and also Day of Infamy, which is more of a World War II based shooter. With what started as just a community-made mod called Insurgency Modern Infantry Combat, ended up becoming the game that we all know and love now, which is Insurgency. So what can you take from that? Well, they probably listened to the community. And you've seen that with the way that they've discussed pricing, free DLC, free content in the future, and pretty much giving you everything you want in the new Insurgency Sandstorm. So most people might be asking like, why Insurgency? I don't, I, I, I don't see why people like it so much. I'm like, all right, well, Name five great tactical shooters that you're playing right now. Eh, pretty sure you can't, and I'm pretty sure if you can, one of them's Insurgency. So, coming into Insurgency Sandstorm, you guys really need to understand what you're getting. Like, these mechanics are unlike any other. One of the biggest things that I noticed in the new trailer that they dropped is the fact that everyone was like, whoa, pistol OP, shotgun OP, this gun OP. People are falling so fast, and my response is, this ain't Call of Duty, so you guys need to realize what we're doing here, all right? This is a realistic shooter, so range on the shotgun is pretty realistic. If you get two tap, three tap by a pistol, you're gonna fall to the ground. Like, the, <laughs> I don't understand why people want a hardcore tactical shooter, and then when you see the hardcore tactical mechanics, they're like, wow, I don't think I can see myself playing this. It's like, listen, you're getting a very simple HUD, which I've always loved in games. I feel like when a HUD is too crowded and there's too much going on, it takes away from the overall gaming experience. So one, they got that nailed. And two, speaking of uh, realistic, your ammunition and player health, those don't really show up, do they? You don't see your ammunition, so when you're getting into gun battles, you don't really know. You know the amount of mags you have, but you don't know how many bullets. So these are all things you have to take into account. And then you're not going to get the beautiful little plus 100, plus 500 when you get a kill. No, it just shows up in the kill feed. Like I said, simplistic HUD. This is what we want. Now let's talk sound design. Where a lot of games lack, besides obviously the overall shooting concept, which kind of blows my mind if you're developing a shooter, you would think that's your most important concept. But I think number two, which kind of goes hand in hand with mechanics, is sound design. You want to have that realistic feel of the way the gun sounds, the way the gun kicks, the atmosphere, everything going on that makes you feel like, yeah, I'm feeling, I'm in World War One, in World War Two, we're in Vietnam, or we're in a modern combat setting. And <laughs> listen, <laughs> if you got some PTSD, maybe you're feeling that as well. And we're gonna move on to Echo. There's some tight corridors before this next objective, so we'll get to, uh, to cover what? each other pretty easy. You see what I mean? And this is what I love about shooters, like when you get that real immersion, that's, that's just, you can't describe that feeling. And I'm not the type to pick up a gun and join the war, but listen, if I could at least feel like I'm a part of it, hey, that feels just as good to me. Now let's quickly go into customization and also the roles that you're gonna be playing. So obviously this is a team-based game. So you're gonna be having to play a, a certain aspect of the team, you know what I'm saying? So you're gonna be a specialist, a breacher, support, a rifleman, a grenader, recon, or sniper. Everyone has their role and everyone is just as important as someone else. Now since we're talking about weapons, let's go into the customization of this as well. So your customization, which I'm pretty sure isn't gonna vary much from console to PC, fingers crossed on that, but it goes by a weight system or better yet, a point system. So you have X amount of points to customize your gun and you can't go over it. So you you have your optics, you have your barrel, your side rail, your under barrel, and then your ammo. All these things can be customized to your liking and each gun is specific to the kind of the scopes and different things that can be attached to it, obviously. I mean, you can't be putting different scopes on an LMG and put that same scope on a pistol. I mean, it just wouldn't make a lot of sense. So it also stays true to itself in that form. Now I want to end this video talking about and praising developers that do the little things. And when I mean the little things, I literally mean the little things. like reload animations, different 
overall animations for characters, shooting mechanics, the way people react to certain shooting mechanics, like the way they die, things that happen, environmental stuff, stuff that people kind of overlook sometimes because they're so focused on so many other aspects of the game, but it's the little things that made games like Insurgency great, that's gonna make Sandstorm great, that made Rainbow Six great. Listen, and look, the reload animation for the AK-47, then the transition to the way he's reloading the shotgun. Then we get the transition again to him shooting the pistol and just watching just the gun cock back. It's 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 literally so beautiful. And then going back to Insurgency, something that I really loved about it was something, it's, it's so simple, but a lot of games don't do it. So a lot of games, when you walk up to a wall, your gun will clip through it. Literally, will clip through it. This, your gun goes in the upright direction. PUBG does this as well. And I think it's a great feature and it needs to be added because then you go from there right into a lean feature. I think the game just flows and it's a nonstop flow and that's what makes it so fluid. It's like you don't have to worry about anything janking up your gameplay at all. It's just, it's a constant beautiful movement. And finally, this is something I wanna address and squash it while we're here. Guns do have recoil, but if you play first person shooters and you're good at them, you can control recoil. Now I'm gonna show you recoil from an N4 without me pulling down on my mouse. Then I'm gonna show you with me pulling down on my mouse. It's very simple, I just wanna squash this here. A lot of people saying, Insurgency, these guns look like they have zero recoil. No, the people playing them, like Big Fry and Level Cap Gaming, they know how to play first person shooters. But that's it for me guys, I love you guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.